Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. This is part two of two videos discussing art projects that I've been making. In the first video, I talked about Radiant, Tile Study, Inflow, and Espresso Dreams. And in this video, I'll be talking about Floral Fusion and Traveling Circus. I won't be going over all of the code because a lot of the concepts that I'm using in these projects are reusing things I've talked about on the channel. But I will be going over some of the code that is unique to these projects, uh, some new learnings that I'd like to share with you. And we'll start with Floral Fusion. The first thing to talk about is that this is a collaboration. It's my first collaboration. It starts off with the photography of this guy, Nomadic Frame, and you can see his stuff is freaking amazing. I was very intimidated by this. I was like, how am I going to not ruin his photography? Uh, and I gave him a few ideas of what I could do with images, and he came up with the flow field. He said, well, you've got these flow fields that are really amazing. I've got these uh, pictures of flowers I think would go well with those. So here is a flow field from one of his flowers. Here is the original flower picture that he took and the flow field that comes from that. We were put together as a collaboration team by the NFT Museum of Newberry, South Carolina. They're going to actually exhibit the floral fusion pieces in their brick and mortar museum in South Carolina, which I'm very excited about. And Fort Gallery NFT is also a collaboration partner on this. Robert Matheson, who's the head of that South Carolina museum, challenged me a couple of times. Uh, one of the nice things about collaboration is bouncing ideas off of each other. And he came up with two suggestions that I chose to implement. One of them was animating the flow field. So if I refresh this, you'll see that this has some animation going on. So I've got a video talking about the animation process. And the second thing he suggested was, could we put in a zoom and pan to this? Which I did. So if I zoom in like so, it gets closer to the center of the flower and then I can pan to the left and I can pan down using this vertical focus. And here I've focused in on the very center of this flower. Now this took me a while trying to figure out this zoom and pan. So here is some code that I'm gonna share with you on the zoom and pan. This code is just using a couple of images that I've uploaded that I took myself. It also has the ability to flip the image. So if I say flip is false, you'll see the image gets flipped around. And if I change the zoom from one, I can change it to two. And you see I get a closer look. And then I've got horizontal focus at 50, which is the center. And if I put it to 100, you'll see the right half of the picture. And if I put it to zero, you'll see the left half of the picture. So I could talk about how this works, but I think I'm just gonna give you the code and you can use it. There's two things going on here. One is the scale function doing negative one comma one. That's how it flips it around. And then the horizontal focus is changing depending on whether you've got flip set to true or false. And then this is where most of the magic happens in placing the image. Using the zoom, the flip, the vertical focus, and the horizontal focus. It's all in here. Now one of the things to note on this is you don't want to just do a one-for-one -one pixel. If you grab a pixel from here and place it on your canvas and you've zoomed in, uh, what you're going to wind up with is a pixelated image on your main canvas. What I was doing with the flow field is I was drawing a thick flow field based on a pixel. And so even if I zoomed in a lot, I still got a nice even flow field. So keep that sort of thing in mind if you're using an image as a source. Also, you could modify this code if you have a buffer canvas that you're drawing something onto a buffer canvas first and then you want to zoom and pan in different areas of that buffer canvas in order to draw onto your main canvas. Another feature of this code is this angle division. So right now it's at zero angle division, which means it's gonna have nice even flow fields. 
But if I change this to 80, you can see these right angles happening. Actually, if I put this to 90 degrees, you'll see exactly 90 degree angles. I can put this to 45 and you get 45 degree angles. In the code, I'm calling this angle skip or ang skip. And I'm grabbing that degrees from the params and then I'm converting it uh, into radians. So I divide by 360, multiply by pi times two, and that gives me angle skip and radians. And for these segments, I'm determining the flow angle based on a noise value. So I've got the noise value times pi times two. I divide by angle skip two. This one is the one in radians. I round it, and then I multiply by that same number. Let's say in the params, we set the angle skip to 45 degrees, and the noise value says this angle right in this spot is going to be 20 degrees. Well, we have the 20 degrees divide by 45, round that off. That's going to give me zero, and I multiply by the angle skip. So then I'm going to have an angle of zero, but if the angle is 40 degrees, I take 40 degrees, divide by 45 degrees, and then I round that, I'm going to get 1. I multiply that times 45 degrees, I'm going to get 45 degrees. So any number between 0 and 45 is going to either have 0 degrees or 45 degrees. So that's how that works. One other thing I might mention here, this hue shift right here. So this, I can change this, and it takes the hue and moves it around the color wheel. So if I make this 180, the color was blue, which is about 220 on the color wheel. Now it's 180 less than 220. So that would be around 30 on a color wheel, which is kind of an orange color. So if we look in the code for that hue shift, I'm grabbing the hue shift from the params. And this is not a P5 function. This is native JavaScript. And this is what it looks like. The CNV here is just because I'm using a buffer canvas. So you can ignore that part. But all of this is the native JavaScript, except for this hue shift. This is my variable from here. So this is where you would put the number of degrees that you want to shift the hue. Another thing I might point out is this shape definition. So to demonstrate this, I've changed some of these variables. Uh, this is shape definition that is not very defined. And then this is a more defined shape definition. And let me put it back the other way so you can see how it's different. The way the flow field happens is it goes through a grid of X and Y positions and it's grabbing a pixel from the photo and then it's beginning a line segment with the color from that pixel. So if the shape definition is down here near zero, it's going to grab a pixel from the photo that's very close to the X and Y position in the grid. If the shape definition is over here, then there's a bunch of randomness to which X and Y position it's grabbing from the photo. So we might be in position 100, 100 in our grid, but on the photo, we might grab position 95, 105 from the photo. So that's why it looks less defined. That's everything I wanted to talk about with Floral Fusion. Now let's talk about Traveling Circus. This is again using flow fields. I've got the angle division again, like I did in Floral Fusion. There's a buffer canvas that has this main shape on it. Uh, the buffer canvas just has a white background and a black triangle on it in this case. And we've got two different angle resolutions and angle divisions. And this is one flow field. This isn't two different flow fields. You can see like these triangles 
are coming here and they're flowing in and then they're continuing in this triangle. When I'm drawing the particular line segment, I'm sampling from that buffer canvas that has a black image on a white background. And if the pixel that I sample is black because it's on this triangle, then I'm going to use the other angle resolution and angle division. And then here in the code is where it's grabbing a pixel and checking which color is it. Is it 255, which is white, or is it not? And if it's white, it's using this formula, using resolution one. If it's black, then it's using resolution two. Another feature of Traveling Circus is that it does line packing and shape packing. I've done shape packing before, but I'm doing it in a new way for this project. I'm drawing black lines on a buffer canvas and then checking the buffer canvas to see if there are lines drawn on that buffer canvas. So if I uncomment this out, that'll show you what's on the buffer canvas. So you can see there are these thick black lines. So what happens is it's drawing a line, it checks the buffer canvas to see if what's on there is black or not. If it's black, then it's not going to draw. If it's white, then it will draw. And each time a line is drawn on the main canvas, a thicker line gets drawn on the buffer canvas. This is true for when it's drawing lines, and it's also true for when it's drawing shapes. When it draws a shape on the main canvas, it draws a thick line on the buffer canvas. Now on the main canvas, I'm drawing the lines first, and then I clear the buffer canvas once all the lines are drawn, and then I draw the little shapes, and that's when I'm drawing the thicker lines on the buffer canvas. The other thing about this is FX hash came out with a new function for what you see is what you get, which is cool. It's called fx.randminter. So instead of using an FX hash as the random variable, it's using the minter's address as the random variable. And that way the minter gets exactly what they see, but a different minter with the same parameters would get something different. But the problem with only using that is that I can't get any other variation because this triangle could be in a different place. This is not a param exactly where this triangle is placed. This is just randomness. So I've added a random seed in here so that the person minting this can change the random seed and get different flow fields and get this triangle in different positions because they might want this triangle to look here and they might want to see a different type of flow field. So where I'm declaring the seed, I'm multiplying these two. I've got the rand mentor times get param rand seed. So the seed winds up being a combination of the two. The mentor has the ability to change the randomness to get different possible outcomes. Uh, they mint exactly what they're seeing right now but a different minter will get a different outcome. Another thing to mention with this project is I had a lot of trouble replicating this at different sizes and different pixel densities. I've got a video on uh, replicating and resizing. And what I found was if I'm grabbing a pixel from a buffer canvas, uh, using what I grab from there to determine an angle for a flow field, it often will give me different results at different sizes. And I tried all sorts of things to fix this, and in the end I could not figure it out. So what I wound up doing with this project was just drawing on a really big canvas, a buffer canvas, and then when I put it onto the main canvas, I'm just scaling it down. So if you see this, instead of redrawing every time I resize, it's instantly placing the buffer canvas onto here. So that does limit the size that the minter can display or print their NFT. I've got it uh, so that they can print it about this big. Hopefully they won't want it bigger than that. But if you look at my resize video, I did talk about 
being able to do this in the first five minutes of that video. And the last thing I want to talk about is the background of this. I'm going to have to get rid of all this flow so you can see what I'm talking about. So we'll take this make flow out here and this make flow out here. Got one for the lines, one for the shapes. So this is what I was getting. I was using the noise uh, to pick a color from the color palette and then I was drawing a square on the canvas but it was very pixelated. So that's going through the grid and filling and making a rectangle. What I wound up doing to fix it, to make it look better, is I pushed, translated, rotated randomly, then drew my rectangle. Here I'm using 0, 0 instead of x, y because I've translated, and then I pop. So let me uncomment these. We'll get rid of this rectangle uncomment this and then we'll uh, control s to save that come over here and here is the result it looks a lot better so now let's go back up and put our flow back in make flow make flow control s to save and here we have our flow field with a nice background so that is everything I wanted to talk about with all of these projects. I hope you got something out of this. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Uh, if you have any questions about any of these projects, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.